our Salain. We have on our Irish, Celtic, Western European celebration a time called Beltane, right? Which is the start of spring, which technically in the southern hemisphere we should be celebrating Beltane right now, which is oh, so we've turned from winter, right? And the pendulum's coming here and we're getting that force of summer coming through. So this is where the flowers start growing and you know, spring is springing and all that, although it doesn't feel much like it today, it's a little bit chilly. Right? But this is our Beltane at the moment, so it should be our fire celebrations in Europe. They have big bonfires and they jump over the bonfires and things like that. That's our Beltane celebrations. In the Northern Hemisphere, of course, we have the opposite because seasons are reversed from Northern to Southern Hemisphere. So while we're having spring here, they're having autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. We understand that, don't we? Yeah. So what they're having, their, cro their crops call a day is the beginning where they're losing the warmth of the year and it starts to get chilly, right? And uh, they're moving into winter. So at this point where this energy starts to turn and you have the greatest momentum, we have a polarity between life and death. Anybody who does a spiritual work realizes that life and death are not opposites of each other. Right? You know, we are all here because we know that there is life after life. Right? And we'll connect with that. Right? And this cross-quarter day makes us aware of the energy between maximum life and, of course, the onset of the decline. So what this celebration means, like in Western European, we're going to sort of stick with Western European because most of us are from those roots and we understand that when I go before lockdown, when I was over in Singapore or in Malaysia or Hong Kong where I go and do these sort of lectures, um, I talk about their day of the, the day, which is their Hungry Ghost Festival. And they get it because it's very much part of their culture. Um, so this time is, according to the, the traditions, is the time where the veil between life and death is the thinnest. One is turning into the other. Even though they're really the same thing. You can't have life without death, you can't have death without life. I uh, used to keep fish, you know, I used to have fish in tanks when I'm, when I'm, well, before I left the Gold Coast and came back to it again. And uh, I used to have marine fish tanks that were huge. Like they were four foot tall, four foot long, and then all shaped, you know, another three foot the other direction. So I had these huge tanks, and the very first time I set one up, I, had, I got fresh, went down, pumped fresh seawater out of the ocean, filled my tank up with it, put all my fish in it, and they died. And they're very expensive. <laughs> I ran up the fish shop and said, What is wrong? And he said, Oh, didn't you put sacrificial fish in first? Because what has to happen if there is no death in that tank? Right? The nitrate levels haven't risen up, you haven't got the correct bacteria in, and if no death has happened in that tank, then it will not be able to sustain the life for the fish because it hasn't got the correct bacteria and the nitrate level and all that sort of stuff in there. So if it wasn't for those deaths, you know, and it's a time for us to think about what we eat, you know. Not just, you know, if we're not vegetarians and we eat meat and things like that because everything we eat gives us life. But ultimately and directly, what has given us our life here right now? It's our ancestors, right? So it is a celebration of every life that has given its life so that we stand here right now and we honour and celebrate them. Because one, like if our great-grandfather married somebody else, we wouldn't be related and would we even be born? You know, we've only got to change one thing and we wouldn't be here. If there wasn't a war, if somebody didn't meet somebody and fall in love. And all of this wisdom, all of this knowledge all of this love of these people coming together has created who and what we are now. And just for a minute, try and imagine 
all of the generations as back as far as you can think right, that have brought you here. Now, if you believe in evolution or evolutionary creation, maybe those generations weren't necessarily always human. Maybe they go back to different species. I've certainly met women, I believe, are very much part dragon, but that's another thing. And you go back and you have a look at these, you know, what characteristics you bring back from other life forms as well. You can go all the way back to amoeba, all the way back to original source. Right? In order for us to live, God, whatever you see God has or God has, has they gave a piece of their life to generate life here. If there wasn't nutrients in the soil, like compost is decomposing, that's what it means, matter, right? And plants can't live without compost. Animals can't live without plants, and we can't live without generally being an omnivore and consuming life from lots of different resources. All of these, everything that is directly related to us, right, either through birth, through ancestry, or through it giving its life so that we can live, it is an awareness that all of those lives are standing here right now where we are. We bring their life forward. Their life, even though it appears to the unawakened people that they died, right? we are in agreement of that life force energy. It is the natural cycle that they progenerate more life. And eventually, like we're looking after my husband's parents at the moment, and we can see them shrinking and getting smaller. Right? And, going, and, and even they will call, they call themselves the kids now because we're feeding them, taking them out, looking after them. They're asking us for money to do things. And it's been completely reversed. They are going back to being children, going back to being babies while they're still alive, getting ready for their next incarnation. All right. And you know, watching this happen in front of us makes us very aware of this. But uh, Ken's father has Alzheimer's. And he still talks to his uncle and his grandfather like they're right there with him. And that's how we know he's getting close to passing through that doorway. Uh, but if Robert passes over, he won't be gone. Because Ken's still there. You know, and we have Robert through Ken. And Robert will be around. And part of his life will still be alive. Right? And that energy will still be around him. But part of his life lives on through Ken as well. And this is a very sacred and a very holy concept. Uh, this is why indigenous traditions celebrate this time of the year, right? Because it's about who you are right now. And every life, everything that's brought you here. So the people that live in fear and go, oh, it's, it's satanic, you know, are obviously really afraid of who Themselves, right? They don't want to look back at what it has cost them to be here. Life costs. Everything in this world is a, is a result of action, reaction, and cost. And it costs us to be here, you know. And I'm not talking about monetary, even though we can relate to monetary things, but there is a cost to life to be here. And this is where we honor what it has cost. All of our ancestors is back, it's the dawn of time, what's cost them so that we can stand here right now. And once we realise that we've got this infinite legacy behind us, it makes you go, well, I better live up to what they expect of me. Right? And you see this respect, especially in Asian cultures, you know, where they will build like little model houses and leave these big feasts out in the street for all of their ancestors that have gone before because they honour them so much. You know, we, we hear them, you know, we hear of Asians speaking about how much they honour their ancestors and they all, just about every house has an ancestor altar in it, right? And um, you get written up 
when she get married, not before you marry, once you married, you get written up on the altar and you become an ancestor because you're about to progenerate somebody else. Right? And there's that huge weight of responsibility. Are we living up to what our ancestors led us to? And if our ancestors were bits of people that you weren't proud of, then what can we do to shift that legacy and make it a better legacy? It takes the idea of karma to a different level because action, reaction and cost, you know? Are we going to just play out that energy that they've given us? Uh, and if you have a look at all of the dysfunctional children, parental relationships we have at the moment, one funny thing that if you do readings with people who have passed over, if you do mediumship, you'll often see that the, the child uh, is their parent of the, all right, the parent comes back as the child of the next generation or comes back within that family. And if there has been a murder, usually to work out that energy between them, that person will have to come back as the child of the person who murdered them. So this is why you get these relationships where the kid stands up and goes, I hate you, I want to kill you, and they yell in the same way. And you get these very angry relationships and they have to work that out with a different dynamic. Um, the universe makes sure that you do. It's been very interesting back in our history. We've got a couple of Catholic saints We've got a person that started an inquisition, you know, and what have they done? They've got a spiritualist, a witch in the family now. <laughs> so, and all of their efforts to wipe out all of this heresy. Heresy, how can they believe things that the church does not approve of? Has only resulted in bringing forward in their mind somebody who's going to make up for all of that damage they did. Right, and there will be many more right after me as well so yeah so what i'd like you to do so you will get that concept I, I don't want to labor the point but you've got that concept it's a simple concept once you get it this is what halloween is it's you know it's hallowed and it's hot, not hollow as in there's nothing there it's hallowed we it's a very sacred time <laughs> so what I'd like to do is just take you through a really brief meditation if you've got this. Alright, so let's just have a look at what we can get from having a look back at our own ancestral lines. So just drop yourself down into a nice, relaxed place where you're sitting, with your feet flat on the floor. Keep yourself open, uncrossed and receptive if you can. And what I want you to do is just get very, very relaxed. Allow yourself to sink deeper into that relaxation. If it's been a busy week like I've had, then just think of your little toe. Because if you can relax your little toe, you can relax everything. So just allow your little toe to relax. And just feel, as that little toe relaxes, that puddle of relaxation start to spread through your other toes, up through your foot to your ankle through your ankle to your knees, through your knees to your pelvis, from your pelvis through to your spine. And as it goes up your spine, not only are your vertebrae relaxing, but all of your internal organs in your body, your digestive organs, stomach, kidneys, liver, spleen, all relax, lungs relax, diaphragm relaxes, heart slows down to a nice steady pace. And with that, you feel the throat open, the shoulders drop, the arms relax. The hands can sit still, busy hands, nothing to do right now, let them relax. And you feel your neck relaxing, and you feel that spread upwards through your face. All the muscles in your face relax. Your hair even relaxes, your eyes relax into the skull. And from this point of perfect relaxation, I want you to imagine yourself on the spiritual planes where you can see every life that's ever been. Echoes and mirrors within mirrors, extending back infinitely behind you. Turn and look behind you. 
and see your ancestors stretching back as far as you can. Now imagine yourself lifting up and floating above this line of ancestors. And you feel a call coming to you as you float above them. It can be close to you or very far away. It doesn't matter. Wherever you need to go to answer that call, you can go there instantly. This is the time. This is the perfect time when the veil is thin to have this communication. Someone has been trying to get a message to you. Go to them. Go to where that call is. Look deeply into their eyes. I just go, what do you need to tell me? I'm ready to listen. And open yourself to the message that they're going to give you. Just take a couple of minutes to absorb that message. along that line. Just cast a request out to all of them and say, can I have your support to do this? I will try to do this, but I need your support. Can I please have an assurance that you are here with me right now?
hope that tonight does bring this awareness to you of just how very special you are to be here right now. Thank you very much. If you have enjoyed this video and you like the idea of making magic readily available to people in their lives for free, then perhaps you may consider supporting my work by a one-time donation or becoming a member of our Patreon community. Your support will make it possible for me to do more of this work and get that knowledge out to the public. Our Patreon members have a unique community where they can share their knowledge and wisdom, but also we will have exclusive content over there for you as well. But if you're even considering supporting us, you have my deepest and sincerest thanks. Every blessing to you. And her name was Maleficent. Oh, come on, that's funny.